Hello viewers and welcome to Mkulima Young program. It's a program that showcases farming techniques, farming technologies and how farmers use digital technology to produce and market their products. And to be precise, we have paid a courtesy call to one Linda Kathambi of City Farming Systems who is passionately doing vertical farming through hydroponic techniques uh, in a greenhouse setup in Kiserian Kajiado County. She grows this type of vegetable crop that is commonly used for making salads. It is called lettuce or lettuce. Now, let's hear from the horse's mouth and be ready to learn. My name is Linda Kadambi Kirera. I'm um, a special engineer and an urban planner, but I'm passionate about agriculture. And for that case, smart agriculture. So um, this journey started back in 2019 or so, when I was doing my master's thesis. I came across this concept of closed rope agriculture system, and I felt like well, we're in the midst of all this uh, climate change and all that, I felt like this was something I needed to actually just try and I needed to try. And so in 2020, well, you know, COVID hit the world and we all had to be closed in our houses. I kept on researching and I think in 2021, I put the idea together and pitched to Kenya Climate Innovation Center. and. They sort of seem to like the idea because we were doing a competition on Vijana and Angry Bees and I emerged as part of the top. And I got into their incubation program, which was um, around one year. And after that, uh, we earned an opportunity to apply for a grant and yeah. Um, they believed in the concept, so they awarded us a uh, POC, that is proof of concept grant, and we were able now to have something to start implementing the idea. And here we are today uh, with all this. So most of it, uh, the groundwork came from the grant, and then uh, me and my team, uh, I have other co-founders. Uh, we have uh, Lea Ngema and uh, Isaac Chan. We have been bootstrapping to get this business where it is up to today. So with our model, how we started, um, this concept, we saw it as a way to help communities, um, you know, um, boost the economic well-being as well as social well-being as we are actioning on climate change. So our model mostly aids to partner with urban households, let's say you have a piece of land that you are under utilizing. You're capable of making 50,000 to 100,000 in a month with just such kind of a business. It's capital in intensive, but once it's set up, it's something that can generate good revenues for you. So we know that not many people who are able to afford such kind of starting capital. So what we do is we partner, they provide the land and the labor, and then we bring in our expertise. So we are sort of an end-to-end -end solution where we'll come set up, walk the journey with you through production until we make sure that the crop is in the market for you. The initial challenges we faced were mostly to do with set up. Remember this is a concept and just so in a book somewhere. But then now actualizing that concept was the hardest part. Well, we reached out uh, to different people. We came up with designs, but when it came to setting up, it wasn't working because this sort of a sensitive system. You have to get it right. Because when setting up, we need this water to flow. So if it's pressure in the pipes, uh, the, uh, the leveling of these pipes, you need to get it all right. Otherwise you'll find that you've put something here and the water is not flowing and your crops will not do well. Yeah, so the setup stage was the most difficult part, 
but we took a step back um, because this is not actually the initial setup we had. We had another initial setup that we had to dismantle all of it and put this one up. So we encountered a bit of losses here and there, but I can say, yes, the journey has been tormenting, but it's been worthwhile so far. So uh, how we have come to navigate around that uh, setup is by having our own um, in-house uh, sort of uh, fundies or rather because this system you see it's a lot of pipe work so uh, we we went to we went on to recruit uh, plumbers who we know we are able to work with and who we were able to sit down with and come up with these drawings so we recruited them and that's how so far we have not experienced anything to do with setup uh, we have been able to expand because we started with um, the first one we saw now the setup was working then we went to the second phase and now we have the third phase and the final phase that we want to finish up on in the next few weeks or month so on our farm we have uh, currently we have uh, two types here but we normally manage on four types that do well on this system so we have what we call uh, oak leaf green and or cliff rent and this one right here <laughs> this one right here is or cliff green and it's a variety we call christine and you also have or cliff rent we focus on uh, concord so this one is or cliff rent a variety known as concord and we also have another one known as rubiri it's somewhere around here yes it's still uh, very small but yeah this one is uh, rubiri we don't want to remove it from here because the roots are very sensitive if you remove it you can't put it back uh, the roots are very sensitive they can get quickly exposed to anything even um, they can get contaminated so these are the ones that we have here currently others we have sold out but we are, the, uh, we are propagating the seedlings so we have romaine maximus and we have another one called butterhead uh, ballerina and we also uh, do ice bag aviram but it does not uh, do very well with this kind of setup so currently we are doing it directly on the soil but we also have future plans to expand and do another type of hydroponics that can support the growth of uh, iceberg as we look into also doing capsicum in the near future. For all our lectures or all our crops, they all take uh, about three to four weeks to propagate. So we normally buy the seedlings. We have partnered with a company that has been certified to do a propagation of the seedlings. So we buy the seedlings and take to them. They propagate for us and that takes around three to four weeks. Then uh, we get these seedlings now and we transplant them onto our system. And then they take another four to six weeks before they are ready for the market. After which, uh, now when we are harvesting them for the market, to make sure that they are fresh and they get to the market while they are fresh. Harvesting is usually done in the night, not in the morning. So we do it in the night, in the night from evening, starting from 7 p.m. That's when they come, they harvest. And with harvesting, you normally, uh, to make, you don't cut the crop. You just normally uproot it, uh, remove it uh, from from the cups and then wash off the roots you wash off the roots so we, we remove all this medium from the roots and then we wash the roots clean make sure they are all clean so we leave it like this and then we wash the roots and of course i remove uh, the unnecessary uh, dried off uh, parts and after washing the roots when it's like this, wash these roots clean, then we just put them in crates and they are ready for the market. You have noticed that we don't, our medium is not swell. We normally use what we call 
pumice and a bit of cocoa peat. So pumice is a product of the volcanic rocks and cocoa peat is a um, byproduct of coconuts. Yeah, the coconuts that we know. So we normally mix a bit of that. And the reason we are adding a bit of cocoa peat, it's because uh, with pumice, uh, the, 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 it has a low rate of retention when it comes to uh, holding water. But when you mix it with a bit of cocoa peat, uh, the way, as the water flows within these cups, remember the roots are getting the water from below. So with pumice, we are able to retain uh, a bit of uh, water so that this mixture is a bit moist uh, to be able to sustain the, to sustain the crops. So we normally uh, use uh, two types of nutrients. We normally call them nutrients A and B. They are normally a mixture of uh, different nutrients. And also within this system, we also feed oxygen to our crops. So when we are pumping the water around, we pump oxygen, oxygenated water and water that has nutrients. And it's a desaturating system. So we avoid water loss. Uh, when you compare this uh, kind of farming to agriculture, we are nutrient efficient. And also we utilize about 90% less water compared to traditional agriculture. Uh, within uh, our system, we are doing the organic uh, kind of farming. So we are organic based. So we don't use really uh, these other kind of factorizers. Actually, when it comes to controlling, what we normally control here are and, and the insect signs and uh, the fungi sign. And we normally use actually kitchen-based products. So like for example, if we are focusing on insects and we we'll just mix a few kitchen products including the dishwashing soap, vinegar, ginger, those are the kinds of things we mix and then we spray on the crops. And whether it's function, then again we will use maybe uh, that again, the, the dishwash soap and baking soda. And then we have this uh, a bit of insects that are flying around, we normally use uh, these kind of stickers to trap them. So this one is really very sticky. If I even put my finger on it, you can see it's, it's sticky, sticky. So when a fly just comes, it just sticks there and um, that's how we, we control uh, any diseases or insects that can affect our crops. But also we are doing this on a very controlled environment inside the greenhouse. So we don't really experience much trouble when it comes to any infections of any kind.